Okay, so welcome everyone today to our webinar today. Um, the theme is adapting to a hybrid teaching environment. Um, and we've invited along instructors teaching in marketing and management. Uh, so my name is Bryony Waters, so I'm part of the marketing team at McGraw-Hill organizing the event for you today. Um, just to go through this quickly, a couple of housekeeping notes. So this is obviously a Zoom webinar. Um, you should be able to see and hear your panel. You won't be able to, as an attendee, um, speak or turn your camera on, I'm afraid, because it is a broadcast webinar. Um, we would very much like you to engage, though, with our panel. So if you have any questions as we're going through, um, please do, do put those into the Q&A uh, uh, box. And you can also uh, use the chat box if you'd like to just make any general comments um, as we go through our discussion today. Um, as I mentioned, the session is being recorded and we will be sharing the recording uh, after the event. I'm going to ask in a moment our speakers to introduce themselves in turn, because I think they'll do a better job than me uh, trying to introduce them. Um, and then we will move on to a discussion um, which will be hosted by my colleague Rosie and our product team, um, where we're looking um, at some of the examples of how our panel have been using various different uh, tools to you know, enhance their hybrid teaching. Um, as I say, we're also looking for questions, so please do, as you're listening to the discussion, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box, and we will allow some time for that um, at the end of the event today. Okay. So without further ado, um, could I please ask uh, Ben to introduce himself, please, Professor Ben Clegg. Yes. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ben Clegg. I'm a Professor of Operations Management at Aston Business School and Head of the Operations and Information Management Department. It's me. That's okay. You. And Alex, would you like to introduce yourself briefly too? Yep. Uh, I'm Senior Lecturer in Strategy at the, the University of Exeter, uh, plus a, a few other visiting posts. Um, I was in industry before um, I joined uh, academia, so I spent 20 years in, in marketing and management, um, uh, and I'm, I'm quite passionate about uh, things like authentic assessment as a result of that, like to bring the workplace and employers into the classroom. Wonderful, thank you. And last but not least, Professor John Farhey, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, thanks, Brainy. Um, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is John Fahey. I'm Professor of Marketing at the University of Limerick in Ireland and uh, also an adjunct professor in the University of Adelaide in Australia. Um, so my background and area of expertise is in marketing, um, author of Foundations of Marketing. And just to give it a plug, uh, the seventh edition uh, will be in, your, in all good bookshops early in the new year. That's just being finished up at the moment. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. Um, I'll now hand over to my colleague, Rosie. He'll be putting some questions to our panel. Thank you. Thanks so much, Bryony. Um, and thank you for our wonderful authors joining us today um, who are going to speak to us about um, some different um, platforms and products that they've used to help with the um, new like hybrid teaching environment that we find ourselves in. Um, so it'd be great if you could maybe um, talk us through um, why you made the decision to adopt an online solution for, for teaching. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we probably can guess COVID made a big um, impact on this, but if there was anything else, because um, I know some of you were using different platforms and products before um, the pandemic. So um, yeah, John, I don't know if you want to start us off with why you made the, the decision to adopt mm. an online solution. Yeah, thanks, Rosie. Um, well, actually, I think in my case, I will blame COVID, um, even though I'm a, an author of one of your books and, um, you know, people might expect that I'd be familiar, really familiar with something like Connect. Actually, I, I wasn't a big user of it. Most of my teaching is, is at the master's and MBA level. So um, when I was faced with uh, teaching an undergraduate course fully online, um, then yeah, that brought me over to Connect, and uh, that's what I'll talk about in a little while because uh, it really made a, a huge difference, I think, in terms of generating student engagement, which is you know one of the big challenges that we have in in these kind of blended and online models that we've got to deal with right now. So, yeah, so I'm a, I mean I'm probably as much of a novice as some of the people on the call in terms of using it, but I'd be happy to share my experiences with it. Great, thank you. Um, and Ben, do you want to um, talk us around your decision of using yeah. an online product? Sure. Um, well, I, uh, I'm i the author of uh, Operations Management, so I'll just share that. 
um, if people can see that. So uh, yeah, so this has gone mm -hmm. to the second edition. Now the first edition came out 10 years ago, second edition out January this year. Um, I was kind of already using Connect stuff already. The kind of teaching I do is mostly MSc students, quite big classes, sort of between 100 and 150 students. So it's kind of difficult to uh, be attentive to that many students. And so the online capabilities of Connect and the eBooks and all that kind of stuff meant that you were able to share more material, more quality material with that number of students. So it supports a large class. Um, the other uh, classes that I teach are MBA students and one of the great things that uh, this book uh, and its materials uh, gives is videos. It's got five video case studies so these are like 10-15 minute video case studies that you can replace instead of a paper exercise which is far more engaging these days and you can obviously view it online anywhere you are so that's a fantastic bonus. It also has about 30 other short video clips which explain techniques like one or two minutes which is really good but the real reason I was using it, I also use it with executive MBA students and sometimes these courses are elsewhere in the world you know so travel was always an issue uh, even five years ago pre-pandemic due to cost and logistics and all that kind of stuff so there's a fantastic thing which I might talk about a bit later called the practice operations game which is a really really engaging online simulation game about running an operations management plant a factory a closing plant and uh, I have always used this I think for seven years and I've used it maybe three or four times a year with classes varying from 30 to 150 so it's really scalable it's online it's robust you don't need to implement any IT into your labs it's cloud-based so many many benefits I could go on and on but I'll, I'll stop there and come back to me as you wish. That's great thanks then um, and Alex what about you why did you decide to adopt an online solution? Well, I, I'm going to follow with the rest and say predominantly because of COVID. Um, I, I'm author of um, Crafting and Executing Strategy, um, which is in its second edition. And, and I'll put a plug into we have a, a new case book, which R Rosie and I have been working on for the last, uh, well, goodness knows how long. But it's um, it's actually due out very soon, if not now, uh, with, with, with six new cases. And we're also working on hopefully having some uh, additional video resources um, in the same vein as, uh, as Ben video cases. The, the second edition had um, four video cases uh, and I totally concur with Ben, very useful, very effective. A, a bit like John, I wasn't a massive user of Connect, even though I, I had the textbook, I, I'd often sort of set something up, but because most of my teaching was with either undergraduate or um, MSc, uh, face to face, students didn't tend to, to make a lot of use of, of online stuff. Um, I, I also was using the business strategy game, which is what I'm going to talk a, a little bit about, which is a simulation. Um, and I think what changed for me particularly was realizing that I had to do a lot more scaffolding, um, a lot more supporting material for students to, to refer to and use asynchronously. Um, we were doing about two hours of synchronous contact a, a week uh, during the pandemic for each each cohort, each class. Um, but there was a huge amount of, of material there and, and you want quality material. Now it takes a long time to develop that. So the, the, the Connect platform um, provided some really good shortcuts. Um, but also I, I think it changed the way I was teaching using the business strategy game. Um, quite significantly and, and, and as I said that's something I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later on. Great thank you um, so yeah it'd be great if we could delve into the solutions that you're you're using um, so yeah John I don't know if you want to talk us through um, how you're using connect kind of specifically on your course and and maybe some of the the benefits that you found as well. Yeah, great. Thanks, Rosie. Yeah, I just want to pick up on Alex's point there about um, scaffolding and, and how, how the modern student learns. I think it's a it's a really important point because, you know, when, when we went into lockdowns and online teaching, you know, it was really quite interesting because 
one of the things that jumped out for me when I when I set set up the the module the way that I did was that you know you, in in the tr traditional face to face way we often struggle to get people to come to our classroom and uh, so now we're offering them this asynchronous option and uh, I found participation levels really high and engagement with the content really high and actually even engagement with live classes online became really high so I, I think I think the idea of multifaceted forms of learning I think is is really crucial in the context of particularly undergraduate students. So even though we're, we're back to probably face-to-face -face in Ireland, certainly in the spring, um, I can see us continuing to do a lot of the things that we did when we were online only. And um, so for me, I'll, I'll continue to use uh, Connect and I'll just share, share my screen here again, just to, to talk a little bit about Connect and my experience of using it. So the first thing um, I suppose to note is, is just how easy it is to integrate into your, whatever VLE you're using. This is the one that we use in Limerick and you know, you've got all your, your content over here on the, the left-hand side, but um, we've also then got, got Connect in there at the top and, and it's really easy because you've just got one, one login uh, essentially for the students and then they just click through and they're, they're straight into, into Connect. And then in Connect, um, you know, so what they'll see is this is this is essentially is what they'll see. And um, what they liked was the fact that each week they had a clear amount of work to do, whether it was a reading, which would have been a chapter from my book or videos. Um, you know, they're all uploaded there. They're all available. We probably, in conjunction with the seventh edition, would probably do something like podcasts. And, um, you know, that'll be something to add in there. Uh, all of this is accessible if you want, uh, you know, you can assess it or in some cases with the likes of the videos, for example, I didn't assess them, um, mm -hmm. but they liked, I, I mean, the feedback I was getting was they, they liked just having this kind of clear volume of work that they got to do each week, um, knew where it was, could do it in their own time and then come prepared to a live lecture, which I continue to do while we were, while we were online. Um, mm. In terms of my main use of it, I mean, again, you know, the, the guys will talk about, say, the application-based <laughs> activities like the simulations. Um, I use SmartBook, and SmartBook for me worked really, really well. So SmartBook is where you assign chapters of your book each week, and you assess whether students complete the assignments or not. So they've, they, you give them, uh, you know, a, a bunch of, of questions that they need to complete and um, once they have read the material and it's a really you know intuitive and and clever way to both engage students with the material and give them a sense that they're progressing and I, I think that was another one of the things that came back quite a lot in the feedback was it was great to have this because they felt like they were engaged with the module and and you know, could see that they were making progress, even though they were completely separate from from seeing us in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I just have a couple couple of slides to <clears throat> to talk about in relation to analytics. So, if you're an analytics fan, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Connect gives you all the analytics that you could care to to want to play with. So, you know, there's, there's five main boxes across the top there. I, I won't necessarily go into these in, in a lot of detail, but you can see how people, you know, who's complete, you know, what volume of students are completing or not in the first box, in the second box, what length of time they're taking, you know, you can assign them a certain amount of time to complete an activity and then measure whether they're taking longer to complete it or shorter to complete it. We also have the metacognition where before they answer any question, before they submit, they've got to indicate how confident they are, whether they've got the right answer or not. So that's really kind of interesting. And then which, which and how many concepts there were that they find challenging and and then as you look down under those boxes you see a top line there with the learner name and you can literally just look at each student's performance so um so you've got all this data and, and behind each of these boxes is, is another level of data that you can get into um so it's really really helpful and just again to, to give an example of that i mean here is here's what you can do in terms of having a look at what topics are people having difficulty with um, and so on. So it's, yeah, you know, now and again, 
a lot of you can you can do as much or as little of this as you want. I mean, this this was here and it was available, and I would keep an eye on it. But if you, but I guess the good thing about this system is, you, as well as as engaging students, you you do have the opportunity to to um, assess them very securely and monitor how they're progressing. So if you know you you can get really easy. Um, heads up if, if students are falling behind or if they're not in, if they're not engaging with the material and you know in week two three or four or whatever um, you can you can email these people and just to see what's going on for them and and also then it's really nice to watch progression over the course of the semester so you know certainly for the first couple of weeks I think uh, students struggle to, to kind of get their rhythm with this and probably took longer on the reading. And of course, they're, they're, they're very good at, at learning how things work and and making more progress and, and doing it quicker as, as the semester goes on. So yeah, so that was, and I, look, I'll, I won't be sharing my screen again, I think. So I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of the kinds of things that, that students said, um, you know, it's obviously, some people liked it probably more than others, but I just draw people's attention maybe to the last uh, comment, which was the kind of continuous assessment nature of the module, you know, made one student feel like they were still actively enrolled in the degree, which I thought was kind of a powerful thing to say because with so many uh, colleagues uh, simply recording their lectures and making them available online, they felt they, a lot of people felt like they weren't actually really at college anymore. Whereas this kind of immersive multi-format content, um, which we have quite a fair bit created already around foundations of marketing, I think I think the students enjoyed all of that. And, and to be honest, the, the, the one online module that I thought probably ranked higher than any of the offline modules that I had taught in the previous nine years or 10 years. So, so something worked and, and I suppose we, you know, we have to say Connect was a big part of that. That's, that's great. Thanks for sharing that, John. And I guess with the, um, the reporting, um, before using Connect, you, did you have any way to sort of see how your students were, were doing or progressing or engaging with the course? Um, you wouldn't see it as quickly, Rosie. You know, you, we, we would have um, activities that we would assess as you go through the, the course, but that might be the first assessment might be in week six or say week seven or something like that, because you need a certain volume of material before you can assess students. So you may not catch it as early. But mm. if, you know, if somebody hasn't completed assignments, say for the first two weeks or three weeks, you, you, you can see it immediately. So, yeah, you know, so it does, I think it does change the way we teach and the way they learn, which makes it um, more synchronous. So in other words, we, we have them doing some particularly, you know, so, so for me with, with this, on, when we were teaching online, we had them doing a, a piece of work each week and we saw that that piece of work was being completed. And I think, as I said, I think I'll continue with that, even though we're, we're most likely face to face in the spring. Mm, that's great. And in terms of setting up your Connect course, how long did that sort of take you? I can't remember. So therefore, it wasn't <laughs> significant. I mean, it really it, it's really very it's very simple as i say you know with the help of of your colleagues you just connect it into the vle um and then in terms of of setting up an assignment each week it's a matter of a few minutes you know mm. really doesn't take that long to do great thank you um that's really um good to hear um all this feedback on connect and um now um i'm sort of aware of the time as well. i want to leave time for q a um ben it'd be great if you could talk us through um, practice operations that you use on your courses and um, how you use it, any student feedback, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so the way I do, you know, a, a course is typically between eight and 11 weeks. So um, I would give students reading. They probably read one or two chapters per week from, from my book. And we would um, do modules from the game. So I'm just going to share the screen with you. Uh, bear with me. We are. Hopefully that's worked. Yeah, we can see that. So, so what you see there is a, is a couple of windows. Um, the foreground window is the game itself, really. So you kind of got an online avatar that talks you through it. So students aren't left 
to struggle by themselves. It's a game that you play and you learn through mistakes. So that's a really good thing to do. The back window, as you can see, is how you set up the game. So for instance, module one is just about process management. Module two will be about supply chain management. Module three will be about bidding, winning new work. Um, module four will be uh, including the, the HR stuff. Uh, for ops and then module mm. five or six is a challenge so the way I do it is I have a lecture every week and then a tutorial we'll be doing other stuff as well so I will start off a session with one of the video case studies that we'll watch and we'll talk about as much as possible when students dry up a little bit we'll kind of go into a more traditional lecture then there are also set challenges to present at the end of each session and then um sort of weeks two or three, the students should familiarize themselves with the practice operations game. And we start to bring in some of the detailed stuff because operations, it's got a lot of exciting stuff in there, but it's also a lot of detailed nitty gritty calculations about inventory management and reorder points and things like that. And which is a little bit dry, you know, I can admit that even to myself. Um, and this game deals with all of that kind of stuff. It deals with all of the calculations uh, in a fun way. And the fantastic thing about this, um, you can see what students are actually doing because you can see when they've logged in, how many times they've done a game. And they, the way I set it up, you can set it up in different ways, but I let students do each of these modules in any time frame over a term. I give mm -hmm. them a timetable, but I don't be strict about it so there's flexibility and I let them do it as many times as possible and some of them do well first second time uh, but some of them do it five or six times and they spend an enormous amount of time on it and you can they come to me in the classroom and you can see how addictive they've got you know they're playing this for like five hours you know to the early hours of the morning and things like that and I meet students about five or six years later after they graduated and they bump into me they come into the university and they and they talk about this game <laughs> it's you know it's been imprinted in their mind how to do good infantry management and, and ordering and supply chain management and um for those reasons I'm a, I'm a great advocate of it and um it links up nicely with with the, with the book and the chapters mm -hmm. and uh yeah, it is a little bit of investment of time up front, I must admit, it, you know, first time I did it, I actually played the game along with the students. Mm. So, uh, so that, that's a, it's a big learning curve. And I've been teaching ops for about, you know, 10, 10 plus years, and I learned stuff from doing it. So, it, so it's fantastic. And it, and it ties up nicely with the book. Um, it, it's great stuff. So, but when you've invested in learning it a bit, you don't need to keep relearning it. So, I've probably used it, you know, as I've said, three or four times a year ever since it launched. Um, that was probably seven years ago. So definitely, definitely worth the investment. And the amount of teaching time it saves you is enormous once it's set up because, you know, notionally a master's level module, I think is 150 learning hours. Only about 30 of that is classroom based. So all of the asynchronous work that the students are supposed to be doing, and you have to monitor to see how they're doing, most of that, well, the majority of it, about 60%, I'd say, is this uh, game. And then I use uh, the score out of the game as an element of the mark. Mm. So it kind of does the marking for you to some extent, because the score in the game is part of their coursework mark. And then as a backup, um, they write a reflective management style report on it as well. So mm. it's kind of a fail safe. So if the students do badly on it for some reason or really just can't get on with it, you know, they can write a report to explain why they struggled. And if they manage to explain why they were struggling, all is not lost. You know, they, they can could maybe still pass. Um, but yes, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Um, no, that's great. Uh, and you, you can get reports from it. Oh, as well. yes, you, you can get enormous amount of reports. Like John said, you know, if you're into analytics, you can totally knock yourself out on all of the analytics you can download. Uh, all of the scores are downloadable in an Excel spreadsheet. So you kind of can tweak about that and you can import it into your marks sheet. Um, but if you want to look at all of the analytics, I won't go into it now because I'll probably accidentally log myself out. But um, yes, there are enormous amount of analytics in it. 
That's great. And do you think students value having <clears throat> something like a, a simulation that goes towards their grade rather than, you know, your sort of more of a formative assessment as well? Have you sort of had feedback on that? Uh, well, we have uh, a variety of different assessments in a module typically. Students like this because the alternative way of assessing this is through a quantitative exam, which is never popular. <laughs> mm. so, so really what this does is it tests the quantitative element of the subject. Um, but I also test them uh, in report writing, in their reflective assessment. And we also have formative presentations uh, based on the content of the book and some of the things in the game. So they'll be working in groups, group works, group presentations, and they'll do peer reviews based on that. But, um, you know, all of this comes from the learning materials uh, found in Connect some way or mm. another. Mm. That's great. Um, thank you so much, Ben. Um, now, um, Alex, over to you if you want to talk us through the business strategy game that you use. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the business strategy game is um, most useful in, in typical sort of capstone courses. So, so capstone strategic management type courses, because what it does is it, it, it actually draws together all the different strands. Students have to think about the operation side of things. So I, I can imagine that if they've done um, Ben's uh, module beforehand, they'd, they'd be well prepared for that. They also need to think about marketing side of things. So you know, linking back to, to some of the stuff um, John would be teaching, but also HR, um, CSR, um, corporate social responsibility elements, um, and just looking at the, the, the financial side as well. So it, it draws together all the different strands. And essentially, the students play in teams, they're managing an athletic footwear company, and they compete with each other. Um, so that's one of the uh, one of the things that I think really tends to uh, energize the class a lot. The fact that they 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 get into teams early on in, in term and, and they're competing with each other. Um, but also um, because it's played worldwide, they're also com competing sort of indirectly with teams from other institutions. Um, and certainly at any one time, there'll be about three or four thousand teams competing in the world. Uh, and I'll give a little plug. One of my teams actually in the final round came top in the world out of the 3000. So um, oh, wow. my, my, de my dean is extremely pleased about that. So uh, <laughs> I, that, that's certainly. Um, I, and so were the students. They, they were kind of delighted. Um, you I, like Ben, I actually use the, the results uh, of the, the simulation as part of the mark, as part of the, the summative mark. And. I think that really um, gets students to commit to the game. Um, but because it's played over a number of rounds, e each round, which is normally a week, uh, is a year in the, uh, in the operation of the company. Um, you can play up to 10 rounds. So, so you know, it could fill a 10 week um, semester quite easily from that point of view. You normally give them a couple of practice rounds. And for each round, the, the, the student teams, the, their board of directors have to put in a set of decisions. Those decisions collectively are then analysed by the, the game's algorithm and the result of that year's trading is then posted and you see who's become market leader, who's perhaps done less well. Um, and that actually provides a, a really good vehicle then for discussions in class, um, because you've particularly if you're teaching um, people that haven't worked in senior management, which certainly with undergraduates is true. Um, and with master's students, even with MBA students, a lot of them are on the cusp of senior management. So they've got a, an insight into perhaps their operational area, um, but not of the, the kind of whole picture. And certainly with a lot of the master's students I teach, um, they're pre-experienced. So they've come straight from an undergraduate degree uh, and in many cases, actually not from a business discipline. So this gives them a, a really good kind of oversight. Uh, like Ben, I use a reflective essay to, to, to make sure that students that don't do well in the game actually have a, a, an opportunity to retrieve things. So, so I'm, I'm kind of glad that that, uh, that chimes with, with, with one of my fellow uh, panel members. And I found that very useful. Um, 
you get a lot of analytics as well. Um, I, I can just quickly show you some of the elements. I, I will share, uh, share, uh, share the screen here. Um, this is um, one of the things that I find quite useful. It's, it's the activity log. Um, now I'll just see if I can show the, you should be able to see that there. Um, you can see that for this particular team there, I don't know, this, sorry, the, um, this, uh, the, you can actually see the members of the team uh, and how long they've been spending on the game, um, when they've made saves, how they're working together, but also how they've accessed the different resources. Uh, they have access to a number of different reports uh, uh, looking at the performance uh, of themselves against their competitors and looking at various trend information, all the sort of macro and micro environmental information that we talk about when we sort of talk about PESTLE and the five forces and scenario planning and, and all those sort of um, uh, internal and external analysis frameworks. This really gives them a, a very good practical way of thinking about that. Um, so you, you can see their activity and, and that's quite helpful when a team isn't doing so well in the early rounds because you can then intervene um, and, and actually, I've done that a couple of times this 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 term with teams that that didn't seem to be engaging and, and their performance was poor and they managed to turn it around, which which was very pleasing. So uh, as an educator, I think that, that it just gives you so much information to actually work with students before the wheels fall off. And I think that's really important. Um, the same is true of Connect. Um, uh, obviously, I'm not speaking uh, uh, about connect as an expert but i found the same is true of the analytics there you can pick up really quickly when some students are falling behind uh, and sometimes all they need is a little nudge um, uh, that usually brings them back on track uh, but if it's something more serious then you know obviously we can we can take action there too um, in terms of the um <clears throat> in terms of the operation of the game itself i'm just trying to see if i can um, now, um, yeah, you, you get a whole lot of, uh, of information um, about the team's performance and you can see the um, decisions report menu down here, the performance of the teams you're looking at. So they have to do things uh, like understand some of the, the, the key measures that performance of, of, of a company is, is uh, determined by. So things like earnings per share, return on equity, that's really useful. It ties in with, with chapter four in, in the book on internal resources. Um, they're given uh, industry overview information about how fast the industry is growing. Um, they get all sorts of benchmark information so that they can compare with competitors. Uh, and then, you know, they, they have, uh, strategic group maps, you know, straight out of kind of Michael Porter's work. Um, and obviously we, we cover that in chapter three of the book. Um, and one of the things you can do with Connect, actually, Connect has uh, exercises that you can link directly to, to the game itself. So you, you can get them to do um, um, more sort of written exercises than MCQ, um, because the game has its own set of multiple choice questions, which again, you can, you can assess them on. Um, and, and one of the things that, that certainly went down well with my university management um, was the fact that um, the students' results <coughs> are actually mapped, <coughs> excuse me, to AACSB um, criteria. Um, <coughs> so as we were going for triple accreditation, they were able to use that data um, to say, actually, we know how our students are uh, progressing against these measures from things like the BSG simulation. So there's quite a lot of um, you know, interesting elements there. Um, we have a question in the chat, I think. Is that? I think that's just Bryony saying to, to, for anyone to put in questions in the chat if, okay. they, if they want to. Um, yeah, so you also can see the individual company decisions that they've made um, over time. Um, uh, and you have a kind of a, a crib sheet of, of uh, 
you know stuff that you can look at and you can see uh, at a glance how how each of the teams uh, have been performing what they've been up to uh, and and you know make comparisons there so there's there's a huge amount of um, a huge amount of information that you've got mm. uh, and it from my perspective having having worked in senior management I, I felt that this was a as realistic a dashboard as you're going to get in in a simulation uh, it really does cover all, all bases and from that point of view it really introduces students to the complexity of running a company um, and, and yes some, sometimes they do find it overwhelming but as long as you put the support in there, uh, I mean, one of the things I do is I have consultancy meetings with the, the students on, on a regular basis. They're allowed to, to have two hours consulting uh, with me during the course of the game, which they book um, and, and we talk through their performance and um, look at you know, what's going well, what could be improved. Uh, and again, that provides a, a huge kind of learning opportunity um, to talk about simple things like, um, you know, the fact that they don't, they haven't managed the supply and demand element. So, um, you know, there was more demand than they made shoes for. So they got stock outs, uh, the sort of Buzz Lightyear situation. Um, or, um, you know, some student teams uh, bid for celebrities. There's only a limited number of celebrities you can talk about, um, you know, uh, valuable, rare, inimitable uh, resources. But, as opposed to sort of resources you need just to be in the marketplace. So there's lots of, of ways in which you can, you can use the game to illustrate points. And I, I would usually embed that in my, um, in my classes. Mm. Um, the, the, the live elements would get a discussion there. But one of the key things I think in terms of moving to and from an online and a hybrid environment is first of all, um, I, this year I'm, I've got a class, some of whom are studying remotely some of whom are in a classroom. The um, game has given them an equal participation in the sense that, that the game will allow for virtual meetings um, between team members. So, mm. the, the, and they can actually work on the game together. Um, they don't have to be using a single person screen. They, they can all kind of input. Um, and it's set up that way because I think it, it's used in quite a lot of um, in quite a lot of contexts in a virtual environment but also um the 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 performance side of things um in terms of the module performance i actually found that with my online when i went online most of my colleagues actually saw a dip in their student satisfaction um this the module i used this for didn't it actually held firm which was was um surprising now, i hope it will hold firm this this term which we're just finishing off um, as we've obviously done it in a hybrid way, um, but it does seem to have a you know very strong uh, engagement. Mm. Um, so I think I think that's probably covered most of the key points. Definitely, thanks so much, Alex. And did do you have any kind of specific feedback from students that you you've received on on using the game? Um, I, generally speaking, the, the feedback is usually it was tough, but it was worth it. Um, and, and a lot of them, a bit like Ben, when they, when they come back and I see them, you know, some years after they've graduated, it's something they will often talk about. Um, mm. Probably the, I, I guess the, the, the biggest student vote of confidence is um, when I first started using the game, um, I actually, the, we have uh, teaching awards at the university, which the, the, the students union, the students guild um, run, and the students vote for um, the lecturers who win the awards. Um, I actually won the, the most innovative teacher in the university award um, when I first started using the game. And that, that was the students on the module using the game that had actually voted for that. So mm. that was kind of, a, you know, I think, a big vote of confidence in, um, in, in the game itself as, as, as well uh, as I hope my teaching. So um, you know, from, from that point of view. But yeah, they're, they're very positive. Most of the comments will mention the game. Uh, and, and the vast majority are, are very positive, even though they sort of say, yeah, it was tough, but, but it was worth it. You know, I, I've learned a lot. That's great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, that's the kind of the main um, kind of portion of the, the webinar. Um, it's now over to some Q&A. So, yeah, please feel free to put some questions in the chat box or um, <clears throat> there is a separate Q&A box. Um, so up to you wherever you want to put it. Um, 
but I've just got another question actually on um did you have any sort of pushback within your departments or anything about integrating an online solution um, and if so how did you overcome that that's open to yeah Ben can you go <laughs> I could uh well at Haston what we like to do is to make sure students are engaging and that we can um, give a surety of learning and a good learning experience. Um, we like to pride ourselves on being innovative. So new ways of learning are always encouraged. And uh, if you can kind of demonstrate that the students are getting a better learning experience, they're getting more out of their fees and all that kind of stuff, um, then these things are well worth investing. You know, there's a small, uh, small fee for each student and the game that I use, but um, you know, the feedback we get from students and, and the amount that they learn, the amount it kind of embeds, they assimilate is, is definitely worth it. And, and, and a related point is if you're early career academic and you really want to demonstrate that you're um adding value to your students learning experience it's something that you can use for um promotional purposes and uh you know joining the advanced he and all of that kind of stuff so it's really good to do so it's not only the students that are learning it's uh, staff are learning to teach better by using these things these uh, ac activity based acti what do you call them um abas yeah application -based uh, application based activity. activities <laughs> that's it yeah that's it yeah, great. I think, Thanks, yeah, John, I think yeah. That, yeah, I think that's an important point. All right, then, you know, and uh, because look, the modern student is going to learn in a different way. Um, and we've got to, we've got to evolve with them. And I, I, th I think this multi formatted content is is really the way to go. They, they like to, to get things in bite sized pieces in a multimedia way. You know, we found with with foundations for years, video was really effective. And now we're looking at other other things that we can add in there as well. And I think I think it's just, yeah, the market is learning differently and we, we've got to adapt to that and uh, recognize that that's not going to change anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think sometimes you do um you do get pushed back in in terms of funding um you know when when a resource is a cost uh, and i think there's only so much that uh you can develop in house um yes okay we can do mcq questions we can do do a, a, a you know a lot of the resources but um with the simulations in particular i think i think you know that is a there's a big investment to actually develop a, a viable simulation as an academic um and and i i mean i've certainly been fortunate the program director of um the the in which my module sits has never sort of questioned once she saw the the student feedback in the first couple of years um it was locked into the budget and and really there was there was there was kind of there's been one or two attempts to try and kind of say you know looking at it and saying why are we spending this money and and you know the program director just goes straight back and goes we're spending it because it works so mm -hmm. you know from that point of view that that's it's it's an easy it's an easy internal sell from that point of view that's great thank you i'll pass back to bryony sure i had a question um which is really around employability skills and whether your students are taking placements or whether you've had any feedback um, from students that are then graduated and going into employment about their skills and whether the tools that you're using have helped them develop those skills uh, skills in a way that makes them more employable. I don't know if John, if you want to answer. Yeah, um, well, if we if we re speak specifically about Connect, um, that wouldn't be so much part of what Connect is about, Brittany. I, I but I think your point is really well made. I mean, we have a, our students all go into placement in their third year and. Um, I think when they come back in the classes I usually teach are the final year undergrad classes, they're really very, very focused on the workplace and on the skill sets that they need in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And of course, particularly with marketing and the way it has evolved and transitioned, uh, the adoption of digital techniques being mm -hmm. central to the way marketing works as a, as a field right now, you know, those are the skills that they want to get. And um yeah, you know, so one of the things that I do a lot of in relation to that is 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 bringing 
guest speakers in. And um, again, that is something that's become really, really easy to do based on this format because people don't have to leave their desks anymore and you can still bring them into the classroom. And that's another vehicle for, for their learning that they really enjoy because ironically enough, you know, I'm sure the guys will agree that a lot, with a lot of undergrads, they only start to think about what they're actually what what they're studying, what's that, what that's going to look like as a career in the final year of study. You know, so they, they're starting to say, oh, OK, so this is what marketing people do or this is what ops people do or this is what strategists do. Um, so they're learning all this stuff, but they haven't thought about it as as their career. And um, yeah, and, and that's, you know, if, if they get that through a simulation, then that's great because they need to know that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think I think my feedback. the feedback I've had from from my students is is um, particularly those that have gone into analyst jobs. Um, you know, they had the confidence to, um, you know, look at look at the figures and, and interpret the figures. Um, and I think you know an awful lot of entry level jobs are uh, using analysis tools. Um, so from that point of view, the, the, there's a, there's a kind of a big payoff. Um, I don't think I've been teaching this long enough to really see whether it benefited students that have made it to senior management yet. There's, I've been doing teaching for the last five or six years. So um, I, I, I would hope to see that in, in the next two or three years, perhaps for the high flyers. I, because I, I teach the MBA and, you know, it's good to have theory and go through all of the theory, but, um, you know, MBAs come from all different backgrounds. Some, some from an ops background, some from marketing and strategy. And um, I think they all learn by doing these online activities. Um, I think they, they find it stressful to do because they really get into the game and they say, it's actually like running a real factory, isn't it? And if I don't pay attention to what I'm doing, then, you know, the, the production is going to get overloaded and, and all of this sort of stuff. Um, I noticed, I think one of my ex students is on, on the course. I have to be careful what I'm saying here, but um, <laughs> you know, in, in, in endorsement of all of this, I have given references to people for job applications and I've seen their job applications and have actually cited uh, doing this practice operations game uh, in their application in their job application form <laughs> as <laughs> as practical experience so you might you might debate whether it is actually practical experience but it, it's you no know, it's proxy uh, practical experience and um, mm. yeah they, they've got a good job with um, a, a supply chain management company so uh, yes I think um, be nice to hear more from the ex-students as well but I've had nothing but positive feedback that's really good to hear thank you <laughs> Uh, I think we're not getting a huge amount of questions coming in from our panel, so I think everybody's um, pretty busy and stretched right now and probably just listening in for some good tips. But um, it's really wonderful to hear that you've had great feedback, both from your students and by the sounds of it, from your colleagues and from employers. So that's uh, really nice to know. Um, Rosie, I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to put to our panel or if we should draw to a close. No, no I think, <clears throat> I think um, the panel did so well at answering all the questions that uh, everything's been covered um we have just had a thank you in the chat so that's lovely thanks um thank and obviously we'll be following up if anyone wants to find out more information about any of the um online solutions that we've been talking about that um you are welcome to find find out more from us yes definitely be very yeah. happy to anybody in more detail and i'm sure our <laughs> panel of authors here would be happy to share further if necessary so thank you, you. Know, there, there is just a, con a question about connect there i think oh, just well, sorry, I yeah that. just in terms of the software getting updated that's probably more of a technical ah, question yes, that's probably a question for Rosie, maybe huh? <laughs> yeah well we update connect alongside our new additions but we're also looking to do more continuous updates of our connect products as well to keep them them up to date with changes in in the market and in the in the subject areas so um that's mm -hmm. That's how, kind of how regularly we update them. Um, but if you would want to find out more, then yeah, do feel free to to email us, and we can give you some more information on Connect. Yeah, I mean, I would say the the one the one thing in terms of um, you know moving to a hybrid environment from online is that having invested a lot in in, in online delivery, um, one of the things I I'm looking at is is what can I still use to make the hybrid. And, and, you know, if we ever go back to fully face to face and, and um, which I don't think we will, I think we're always going to be in a hybrid environment from now on. What can I use from that online experience? You know, as a, as a group of educators in higher education, we've been through a, 
uh, a huge learning curve. And as far as I can see, the, the best thing we can do is, is take the really good stuff that we've learned about uh, and, and pull it through. Um, and, and one of the things, um, you know, when I was doing the case book with, with Rosie, doing the questions for the cases in particular, um, one of the things that, that McGraw Hill have set up is, is, is a Bloom's um, taxonomy element for each of the, the questions. So, um, you know, there's lots of underlying um, kind of thinking on into that um, and, and good educational theory. Um, OK, I know Blooms, are, uh, we were using an, a, a relatively up to date version of Blooms because um, there are adapted versions. But that's that's helpful in terms of, of, of gauging where students are, uh, mm -hmm. how students are progressing. Mm -hmm. and, and it may be that your you know, internal VLE does this very well, but um, certainly at, at Exeter, uh, we don't necessarily have access to the same level of analytics as, as I can get from from BSG and Connect. So, so that just proves hugely valuable. But yeah, keep the good stuff uh, when you move into the hybrid environment from all that online. Yeah, we've definitely had feedback. That's one of the biggest challenges is the, what to keep and what do people really appreciate the most. So definitely lots of lessons from the last year or so. Wonderful. Let me just check. There's nothing else coming at the last minute, though. I think not lots, just a few thanks from our attendees. So um, yeah, thanks once again to our panel, to John, Alex and Ben for sharing their expertise and their experiences. That's extremely helpful. And thanks Rosie for chairing our discussion today. Thanks for everyone who's uh, taken the time to attend. So you will receive a follow-up email in the next few days that will have a link to the recording in case you want to watch it back or do feel free to share it with any of your colleagues. And if you'd like to know more, then please do drop us an email and we'd be happy to speak to you. So, thanks once again, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.